All right, Mopar people, welcome back to the channel. I'm just Mopar Joe. Today we're going to look at some Mopar Rocker Arm Tech, if you want to call it. I'm working on the Dino 440 build, and we're trying something new here. Uh, this is actually a shim kit from B3 Racing Engines out of Pennsylvania. So I'll put their contact information somewhere in here, but I kind of want to show you uh, why this is an interesting topic for Mopars. So here's a rocker setup. We're using these PRW rockers. If you look at the basics of what's happening here, you have a fixed shaft. The shaft does not move. It is fixed here. You have a valve tip angle that does not change. It only goes up and down. So that angle in comparison to, say, the flat deck of the block stays the same. It just travels in that plane. Here's our lifter. Our lifter angle does not change. It stays exactly as it is. And I think I attempted to measure that earlier. I'm not gonna tell you what I got, but I tried to make a crude drawing of what's going on here. Here's my beautifully crude drawing. Uh, our cam spec is 0.365. And if you look at our Cam Pro uh, Plus card, they got 0.36425 peak cam lift. I know the angle's a little bit off from that side if you're at this angle. Anyway, so if I draw us a line here coming straight out of that, we would be hitting about the center of our cup here on the bottom of the adjuster. Now we imagine that we rotate, it depresses the valve however much. Doesn't matter. So now I'm gonna draw us an angle. I'll move the rocker out of the way. This is what they're calling the sweep pattern on the inside of the valve. So obviously we have a roller that goes over here and rolls across. This is the sweep of the valve. And what B3 does is actually they give you a shim spacer. It looks like this and it's a little half moon. It's thin on one side and thick on the other. It will raise that shaft. So just imagine we go to here now, to the center hole. It raises it and it brings it outward. So if we line everything back up, it kind of positions our roller more centered here and on top of the valve. And we're gonna have, a, have to have a longer push rod itself. So coming out of the center of the lifter bore again, then when we go to, say, a max lift situation, which would be downward, I can draw us another line. So what's happened here now, instead of having this big wide sweep of the lower shaft, they're shimming it up and out, which my circle should have been moved out a little bit more. When they do that, it decreases this amount of sweep. So we only have about this much sweep now, instead of this big wide sweep here. I like this idea, and here's why. So here is the ball adjuster right there. Here is the ball end of the push rod. What it does during its travel with that wide sweep, it has to work it just like this. So the, the whole push rod itself has to wiggle and move with it. And every time that happens, it just grinds the end of this push rod shoves it back and forth just like that into the tip of that adjuster forever and ever and ever but if we move it with the the upward motion and the limited sweep now as it cycles it has very little sweep here so if i even hold the bottom with their shim kit it will change the geometry of your rocker system and also i can see it causing less wear on the tips of your push rods and your adjusters. So you only have about four threads, three and a half threads inside of that uh, that are actually gripping instead of having it fully threaded through here with a hole. And I could see that it's probably sectioned like that so the oil can get through. Oil will, if you're running oil through push rods, it will oil and push into the bottom of this and come out of the hole and then it will spurt into that little tiny hole there and oil the shaft and then it's supposed to make its way through the shaft and oil 
that other little tiny hole that will spurt a little bit of oil onto your roller all the time. So that's a lot of oiling to have to happen if you're going through the push rod, and I, I do think that works, but I definitely like and prefer the shaft mount rocker oiling better. Um, but then it, all it has to do is pump through and spurt out of the little holes into the adjuster and then down to get to the tips of your push rods, also spurting out that way. Usually there's not an oiling problem here, um, but with these trick flow heads, I know they reduce that oil hole diameter down. So we're gonna see what kind of oil flow we get when we prime this thing before it ever gets off the run stand or off the build stand. But I need to get set up now. They send you a couple uh, nice little push rod checkers and we'll probably use those because this takes the uh, ball and ball style instead of a ball and cup like the old school Mopar stuff and Harlan Sharp. January 28th, I'm going to be uh, live on YouTube with Jamie from Dead Dodge Garage. So I think a lot of you know who Jamie is and follow his content. Others, if you have not heard about him, go check him out. And we'll probably have some good Mopar conversations and a good old time. So I would look for that uh, 8 p.m. Central Time. He's in uh, Washington, I believe. So he does a Sunday Night Live if you want to check out the other Sunday Night Lives. And I went ahead and tried to put my, left my old line on there, see if we can make a new line and I'll hold up on this valve so we can see what happens here. And if anything, I think it actually made it, pulled it slightly further to the inside. Let me get my pointer. You can just faintly see see a line in between the two. I think the, the higher up one is the B3 and the slightly lower one was the stock PRW stuff. Let's look at this one, see where she's at. See if I can do the same thing while holding the camera here. This was something else I wasn't a big fan of and only half the rockers had it. See the side play on that roller? And you can hear it. I'm assuming it will get better when oil gets in there, but this one seemed a little tighter to me. Maybe I'm crazy. Anyway, without letting our rocker depress the valve any. There we go. Yeah. It brought the line, brought the line right there to center. As you can see it there, just like that. Interesting. So I've talked to Mike at B3 Racing, their contact number. He is a wealth of knowledge. He's got some good tech articles on it at their website. I'll put a link in the description here. But basically, they're able to use a little longer push rod. This is just part of it, I'm summarizing here. Using the longer push rod, the, the push rod doesn't sweep as much in the motion of the rocker working. So reducing that gives it more accuracy at the valve and also a tighter sweep pattern at the valve, which all increases longevity and efficiency. So he said he goes to Carlisle. He always has a booth set up. So if you're there, uh, tell him hello. And if you have any questions for him, give him a call. I think I'm pretty satisfied with the setup. I'm looking forward to finishing the rocker arm install and uh, getting our engine to the dyno soon. So. I appreciate y'all watching, and I will catch you next time.